All right, so this is for the uh, Rexing dash cam. The Rexing dash cam is, is really a nice, simple, not super expensive dash cam. Uh, this one in particular is the 4K Ultra HD version. Um, the issue with it is that it has old tech on it. And when I say old tech, I'm talking in particular about the power plug. This uses the mini USB. And remember when our phones used to work off of mini USB? And we had issue after a while that the power cord wouldn't work. The plug wouldn't work, so to speak. That's because this, as being one of our earlier models of USB, had an issue of it just breaking. So that's the weak point in the Rexing. If Rexing decided to keep this model package and change this to a USB-C, which would be awesome, they would be able to get their sales up with the same original equipment and just changing it to a USB-C. Anyway, so what we're doing today is we're going to take this apart and we're going to inspect the connection on this. I had two of these. Both of them were having power issues. Plug it in and it would either come on and then eventually go off or not come on at on. Issues like that. Um, and I've already changed the actual cable power adapter that plugs into it. And it's just having issues. So this is an old one. I already have a different replacement. And I knew that it was good and just needed something to do. So uh, something to do in this case would be to change out this adapter completely and put in a hardwire version. But let's do a quick inspection because maybe it just needs to be soldered. So on the Rexing it has four holes. One, two, three, four going to use a tiny Phillips screwdriver to take out those screws. I've already taken out the first three. So this is the last one that I'm going to use. All right. From there, it's real easy. It just kind of gets your fingers underneath the edge. Or you can use a pry tool or a flathead screwdriver. I'm going to use a guitar pick as a pry tool. And I'm going to get under the edge and try to pop it out okay I can get it a little bit there we go and it just pops out from there okay so now what I'm gonna do is just slide it out And be careful because you're going to have inside wires connected. This version has super capacitors. There's other versions to earlier versions which actually has a battery. So this one, as you see, has two capacitors inside. And that's what it uses as its backup battery. And then also the shock sensor is on there, the G-Shock sensor. And they're plugged into your main board. All right. So now... We're just going to kind of arrange this so we can get a good look inside. And let me see if I can arrange this in a way so that you can see what's going on. All right, so let's take it. Right there is our power. So the issue that we're going to have potentially is that the power is loose. Okay, hold that here for me. Camera assistant today is Aiden Shannon from a kid's perspective. Can you zoom in on that? Nice, good job. Let's see if I can get this angle right. Mm. All right, so I'm gonna just kind of touch it and see if it's loose. It doesn't feel that loose, but I've seen these broken off before. What you're gonna have is your pin on this edge and the pin on that edge are your positive and negative that's gonna be used to supply power. 
Now, if you want to, you can hardwire this in. And I've done that before on my other version where I've uh, taken the plug adapter and I've wired two leads onto it. And with those leads, I've been able to put a negative here and a positive on that end one and supply power and it works fine um, which of course means you can't unplug it anymore so that's one way to do it and to get in there another thing you can do is you can switch out that unit itself by desoldering the four points one two and then there's two on the other side you unsolder those four points and then you can uh, desolder that connector in case it's just a bad connector and you want to just go ahead and replace it. To be honest, I would rather put leads on it and if I wanted to keep it connector, I would use a USB-C as a connecting lead. So I would wire the negative and positive, come out the little hole, and the end of it would be a connector that I can plug in a USB-C. Serious upgrade, awesome. And then I would use like some glue. Um, hot glue would work awesome to kind of plug up the hole and allow the cable to not move. So that's pretty much how you can disassemble to access there. Another thing that can be done is if you have the version that has the battery and you need to change out the battery, is you want to just take this a little bit stretching out be very careful with it go ahead hold it for me please mm -hmm. thank you very much and the battery which would be in this place this version remember has super capacitors uh, the battery normally would be there and it mounts to the board easily enough you can see a negative and positive lead for the battery so you can desolder there and take it off and switch that battery if you were opening yours to do the battery. To take off the camera lens, you will see right here an access hole. In that access hole will get you to that screw. And this access hole will get you to the other screw. That's how you take off the side pieces, the handles. Once you take that off, the camera will come up a little bit more and then you'll see below, you can kind of see it here. That little ribbon goes into a slot similar to how it would on a cell phone if you've ever taken apart cell phones. That little ribbon would go into a slot. There's a little flip pin that locks it so you would flip it to unlock it and then you can pull that ribbon cable out and then detach the camera to replace the camera. This is a bracket that the camera sits in, and there's two screws there. You can see one of them right here. There's so one screw there, and there's another one on the other side. A little bit hard to see, it's okay. Yep, so one screw there. So you can't get to these two screws until you take off the camera holders, positioner. And that's pretty much it. The reverse of putting it back on, once you put it all together, the four screws back in and you're set and ready to go. So that's how you take apart your Rexing cam to replace the battery, if you have the battery inside, to replace or bypass the power plug, to access the screen, you would just basically, let me go into there, there are screws that mount the board down. You would take those screws off. So once you get the camera off, there you go. Once you get the camera off, you'll be able to see on the board, there's three screws that hold the motherboard down. Once you take off those three screws, you lift up carefully because the monitor is attached to it disconnect the monitor and then you can change out your monitor all right i hope this helps you in learning more about your rexing dash cam and if you had the issue of the power not working and you know this should be a good dash cam and you've already traded out your power brick your usb 
is one thing to look at see if that's loose or disconnected or swap it out completely it could be uh, bad or hardwire it using negatives on that side positives on that side so the last pins the last pin and the last pin on the other side are your positive excuse me I'm gonna say it appropriately are your negative and positive connectors you can also test that with a voltmeter in order to make sure that when you plug in you're actually getting electricity on the other side of it thanks for watching